Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. Ray McMillian has a gift and a dream. He's determined to become a world-class professional violinist and nothing will stand in his way. Not his mother, not the fact that he's poor, not even racism. Our book is The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum. Let's meet my guest Todd Cummings, who doesn't let anything stand in his way. Welcome, it's so good to have you. Thank you, Gail. I'm thrilled to be back with Michiana legend Gail Martin. Thanks for having me. <laughs> the fourth time, the right? The fourth time, yes, I'm well, honored. Yes, and you're cooking more and more, and it's just, just getting so exciting. Well, you've inspired me, thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad I, I've done that. Uh, so, we talk, about, um, we talk about this book and food does enter it, oh, several times. And we're, we've strung together some scenes from the book. Uh, and let's just talk about what we're, what we're making. You're doing a breakfast, talk about it. So the book it. starts off with breakfast, and so I'm making a frittata with roasted tomatoes. It's a French dish, isn't it? It's a French, I'm trying. Yes, yes, very good, very good. And I'm going to make a pie, a blueberry pie. Mm. It's just a one crust pie, and these pies were served at the Thanksgiving uh, celebration uh, when all the family came together. And then at the end of the book, um, our violinist uh, is stopped by a policeman. It happens to him twice in, a, in his car. The first time they think he's stolen a violin case. The second time, I can't remember the detail, but I know he was stopped and he was with that crazy couple that I don't want to get ahead of the story, but he's also guilty of something of what he does not know. And so he has purchased some Cobb salad and he's going to take it back to the hotel and he never gets to eat. He just throws it out. He's so disgusted. So we're doing a Cobb salad for uh, Brendan. Uh, and so you're going to start with your bacon or what? I'm starting with bacon in the microwave because I don't sure. want to clean up a mess and prepping my tomatoes. That sounds good. That's right. We've got all this to do. Well, I'm going to, I have been cooking a little bit of this, uh, uh, the blueberry, and I added some sugar, a little bit of salt, and some liquid. And I'm going to add a little more liquid, just a little bit of water. And then we will add some fresh blueberries, put it into the unbaked pie crust, and put it in the oven. Uh, until it browns and our pie will be ready. And then usually you can serve it with some whipping cream. And then I'll get started on my salad. It's gonna have all those, not layers, but all those ingredients that are strung around the dish in a very artistic fashion. Look at this. Do you want, oh, you're gonna put another one on top then, right? The yes. paper. Because Good. while I wanna fry, I don't want to clean up the mess I, in WNIT. I thought I we'll use the microwave. He can fry it if he wants. <laughs> And he can clean it up afterwards. <laughs> I have just decided I'm doing bacon in the microwave it, and cover the, the bacon with a paper towel. It, it makes it so much easier. So these have cooked a while, and I'm going to add some fresh blueberries. We're not going to cook them, but they will be baked in the oven, which I have set at 400, in this pie shell. and. We will bake the pie for maybe 50, whenever it turns brown, you know, because this has already been cooked. I like to add some fresh berries because it is nice to be eating a pie and you go, oh, I think I just had a fresh berry. You want to make it a little more uh, fresh and not just everything cooked. And so I'm going to come behind you and uh, I see that I want to make this even a little more wet, liquidy. Now, we talk about everything going on in this book. I, I think we should talk about his family. What characters? What characters? E throughout the entire book, they do their best to discourage, 
to take his money, yes. to make him stop what he's doing. She wants her son, when he gradu graduates from high school, to go work at Popeye's. Nothing, nothing, you know, against Popeye's, but she thinks that's going to be his life career. And uh, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to play the violin, and she doesn't even like the music. She leaves the room or leaves the house when he's practicing. She can't stand it. So can you imagine growing up in a situation like that? And she wants him to give half the money that he's going to make, wherever he's going to end up working, and so she can buy, what, what, what inch TV does she want? It seems it like a it's giant set. television. It's, yeah. But it was always short term, so she didn't want to invest in his career, she didn't want to invest in his lessons, and even at the end it was always short term, small amounts of money. Yes, and I want half of everything you everything, make. Right. And, and she sits and does her nails. I mean, she just kind of drives you a bit crazy. Uh, but he's got two, there are two female uh, members. There's uh, Aunt Rochelle and his grandma Nora. Mm -hmm. And these women are to die for. I mean, they are terrific. They love him. And they tell him they love him. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun seeing them together. And his Aunt Rochelle is, is every bit a champion. They all encourage him to do things. Now, when we start the book, we find out that a violin has been stolen. But then we go to the part in the book where you build the story. I mean, there's not a, even a violin in the story in the beginning. How does he get this old violin? So the story, you have to keep up with the time frame that is used. Yes. But mm -hmm. he wants to play the violin, and his grandmother says, I have one in the attic. And so she goes, and she gets this horrible, dusty, rosin-encased violin, and she gives it to him. No one else in the family has ever wanted it. They think it's awful. And that's where we start. They don't want him to have it. Wait, why are you giving him that old violin? Right. It doesn't you work. Know? It's broken. Yes. So, of course, he starts investigating it. And uh, I guess we have to say what he finds out about this violin. Can right? we say that? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Let's so he it. takes it, you know, early on to have someone look at it. And, you know, they think it's, you know, trash. And they oh, put they, oh, um, yeah. horrible stops and strings on and then as he practices and he needs a new violin for a competition they find out i'll let you share well they have an, uh, an assessor it says assessor it's not really an assessor it is somebody that imagines or actually determines the price and if it's a worthy violin turns out it's a Stradivarius it's one of the four <laughs> most famous violins in the world now this is a bit of a stretch in my mind that this would be found in an attic but mm -hmm. see since they didn't really care they didn't care if it got dusty and moldy and all of that uh, and so uh, he is be bound and determined to have it repaired. Mm -hmm. And after reading all these pages twice, it, it's been very expensive to repair. I was surprised. One, I love an art mystery. And it was expensive to repair, how much money he had to sink into repairing and then finding out that it's a Stradivarius. Yes. To me, that was the only thing in the book that was, seemed a little bit strange. Uh, but then, you know, he he's, meets this Janet, um, oh gosh, what was her last name? I forget her last name. Uh, college yes. professor he has. She, yes, Janet S. will call her. They become <laughs> fast friends. She helps him. She goes with him. She gets this uh, ev uh, evaluated, the violin evaluated. She helps him get training. And, you know, this kind of goes very, very fast. And all of a sudden she says, you should try out for the Moscow Moscow. Uh, championship. Uh -huh. It's not a championship. It's a world famous competition. Uh, uh, we were talking about the Texan from the United States that won it, Van Clyburn, the only American ever uh -huh. to win in this competition. Uh -huh. And here he goes and he spends, he sets up a two year training program how he's going to learn to play Mozart correctly uh -huh. and Beethoven and all these various composers. And he studies like 12 to 14 hours a day. And meets quite a cast of characters along the way. Along the way. <laughs> and then he starts practicing and taking part in some competitions. Mm -hmm. And then he meets this girl, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Who she was playing in an ensemble while he was playing at 
in a not a competition, but he was playing at an engagement, and folks would come just to see, yeah, his violin. Well, and she she becomes fast friend, and she does lots of things for him. They get along quite well. He gets along with the uh, the professor that is his, mm -hmm. his teacher, and she protects him as well and helps him make decisions because mm -hmm. you can you can really have people pull one over mm -hmm. on you if you're not guided to right. watch out for certain things. So this is the first part of the book, and. Uh, and the t like you say, the time thing is sort of confusing. Mm -hmm. But one day he comes out of the shower in the hotel he's staying. And later on, he opens up the violin case. And what does he find? It's gone. It's gone. And somebody has put a size 10 and a half tennis shoe, tennis shoe. in there to hold the way the same. So we have this now. And he he's sort of stricken, like, how did this happen? And his friend Nicole said, well, there is a woman that uh, is a legal alien. I bet mm -hmm. she did it. She left the country today. And so uh, they kind of go in that direction. And they think well, she's probably guilty. They can't find her. She has left and gone back to Honduras. The FBI, yes. our crimes unit comes in to help. And the anxiety I feel, I thought was palpable over this lost violin. It becomes its own character. It does, mm -hmm. it does. And he is so embarrassed, but we don't want him to remain embarrassed. We're going to take a little break to get ready for our next segment. And so we want you to take a look at our menu today and we'll be back to find out what happened to Ray's violin. It's very mysterious. We'll be right back. And our book is The Violin Conspiracy, and we are in Moscow, and our friend has just realized his violin has been stolen, a $10 million Stradivarius. And I find that not unusual. Yo-Yo Ma lost his cello in a taxi, and he got mm -hmm. it back four days later. Mm -hmm. But he gets letters now from people. Well, the family wants to know why he never told them that the violin was worth 10 million. And they're already dividing up all that, of course, the family. And then um, he, he gets a letter and a call from this couple who say they were related to the slave owner who owned Ray's family like two centuries ago, and they want the violin. The story brings out the craziest cast of characters who yes. all claim this violin yes and it, we it, don't we, we don't know the the full provenance of the violin until the the end of the book but everyone feels like they have claim to this random violin and his mother of course she wants to, though the family wants him to sell it so they all get 1.6 million dollars right and and uh of course, there's a ransom note, and he has just a certain amount of time. Uh, and so he crowd, what do you call that? He crowd, crowd funds. funds. Mm -hmm. Even in Moscow, he says, if everybody will send me a dollar, I can get, I can pay the ransom and get my violin back. And I thought, how are these Russians, gonna, well, they find a dollar if they really want to do this. And so it, it just seems like a slow process. But he does raise about four million, doesn't he? He does. Or Six million? He does. And I'll admit that I thought that that made him seem really suspect. That when he was trying to raise the money for this violin that had insurance, I thought, huh, I hadn't suspected him in the theft, but I, want, I wonder if he's somehow behind it. Well, the author is very good at, at making you suspicious of everybody. Everyone. And, uh, and you, won't, you don't find out to the very end who, who really made a mess of this, <laughs> made a mess of his life. Uh, and uh, so 
he does play with his old violin. He plays in the Moscow mm -hmm. competition, and he sets up this cross the room sort of eye glare with mm -hmm. the, the top uh, Serbian violin mm -hmm. player in the world. And they go mano a mano, right. or violin to violin. And they end up winning, both of them, at the end. I mean, we're just going to say that. And we, he doesn't have his violin mm -hmm. back yet. This couple that says he's, they're related to the man who was the slave owner, they want it, and they are suing him. The family sues him. I mean, this man <laughs> is just torn in shreds thinking about all this. And how he has to focus on not only his competition, but all the other gigs he has coming up, and he has these multiple lawsuits, and, like I said earlier, this, char this violin becomes a character, and you're, I found myself concerned about the violin, where is it, who's taking care of it, and so you feel that anxiety for him as well. Where's this great-great-grandfather's violin? as soon as you think you've got it figured out something else happens but here's this poor young man he, they don't let the author doesn't let him win the, the the Moscow competition but he comes in second he gets signed up for all these tours he still doesn't have his violin back and how does he all of a sudden discover what happened to this violin well I I have to admit um, I almost didn't finish the book because I was afraid that I would give it away today, so I'm going to be careful. I'm going to let you handle this. Oh, well, <laughs> in any case, we have two cart cases going on, and we, if, at the end of the book, Nicole is writing him a letter. Mm -hmm. And she says, I love you, I love you, I didn't mean to hurt you. I only thought about my future and your future, and that's as far as we'll go, mm -hmm. right? But anyway, he doesn't, she wants him to be a, a witness for her good behavior mm -hmm. and her good character. He won't do it. And of course, this young man, I don't know how he could stand all this, uh, and the family he works out a plan. The family's going to get some of the money mm -hmm. if he ever sells a violin, some of the insurance money, and it all ends well. But it we, does. But we aren't going to tell you what actually does happen because we want you to read the book. And he, to me, the only thing that was amazing to me, people who play in the, in the Moscow competition are people who probably played uh, 10,000 hours mm -hmm. a, a, a a, a year right. and have probably studied violin for mm -hmm. 20 years and he you know he does this all pretty quickly mm -hmm. and uh, but it makes for a very exciting and fun book and it was such a page turner because like you said earlier it was always something new happening it was the lawsuit it was the court cases it was always some new really horrible cast of character coming out against the uh, Violin player. Yes, <laughs> and after the competition, he just he has signed up for a lot of world tours, and of course his mother always calls him, and the family calls him. How much did you make at that gig in Stockholm or in in Vienna? And so uh, he uh, he has to dodge them, but he mm -hmm. also does give them money. Mm -hmm. He's a very generous mm -hmm. nephew. So the story may seem a bit far fetched. But as I say, many violinists, cellists, have left their cellos mm -hmm. in taxi cabs or they have been stolen and there have been lawsuits. And this, these two lawsuits are just amazing uh, in the sense that they almost come on top of each other. And the people that ha owned the violin, the family owned it, they're on top of the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. They want to get, oh boy, they right. want this violin no matter what. Even if it hasn't been fixed yet, they want it. And they, they're the ones that pop up everywhere. Where he's in New York, they pop up on a right. snowy night. Mm -hmm. And that's when he gets arrested for having the violin in his car after everything is kind of worked out. And there's this undertone, I think he handles it really well, there's this undertone of racism oh. that he discovers. And I thought it was really an interesting look at the life of a professional musician as well, but specifically the life of a professional African-American mu uh, musician 
and what he has to overcome and the arrests and the stops by police. I thought he wove that together really well. We have read numerous books on dinner and a book about this kind of uh, trailing of black men in their cars and uh, and how they're pulled over and accused of things. And, and, and so this happens to him uh, twice in this book. Uh, he even misses a concert because he's pulled mm -hmm. over in, in uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he's got all this going on, the family, I don't know, we don't really know too much at the end of the book. They kind of disappear, don't they? Do. they? Once, once it's been decided, they take an offer that he mm -hmm. will give them a certain amount of money right. every year. They reach a settlement. Yes, and they reach a his settlement. his family disappears. We hope that it's forever because they're not, they're not very nice to him. They aren't. They're, they're, they really... <laughs> And they reach a settlement with him, and we assume that he pays it, and then we're still on the search for the violin up until yes. the very end. Yes. So, and there's a lot of insight, too, about learning to play at that top level. Mm -hmm. uh, I had read that to become a outlier in, like, as a professional musician, you have to practice at least 10,000 hours mm -hmm. a year. And he's been doing that. And then, of course, he's practicing for six months. And um, so in any case, uh, we're going to take a break. And uh, we're going to, let's see, what are we doing in this one? We want to see, a, we've, we have the food. And we want to show some pictures of this Moscow competition with the bright lights, the gold chandeliers. I mean, this is something to behold. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. So we're talking about The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum, and you and I both agree we liked it. We did like the book very much. Yes, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you told, you, li you told me you like books about art heists. I'm a fan of the art heist, and so when The Violin was stolen, there are other books about the Isabella Gardner Museum in Boston. I like the FBI art heist <laughs> ring, and I like a good art heist yeah. Book. And this fell into that genre nicely. This was an art heist, a violin mm -hmm. art heist. I mean, heist. I love heist. that word, heist. At first, I thought you were talking about some German expressionism. <laughs> and I thought, what is well, art heist? Yes, that's it. Exactly. And <clears throat> it, since we had, you had so many ideas about who could have stolen it, it was successful in tripping you up a little bit on the timeline and who, who left little clues. So I thought it was going to be easier to figure out than it was, but it really did take me to the end. And like I said, by the time I got to the end, I thought it was the the main character, and I was a little surprised at the end who it was. But he, there's so many horrible characters in the book yes. that it's, it could be anyone. Yes, it could have been anyone. <laughs> it could have been the whole family getting together right. and putting an old tennis shoe in that, in that old violin case right. and running off with the violin. They had all kinds of plans for what they were going to do with the money and they were going to, uh, it, it was a crazy family, but it, it was funny. But I have heard about people that win, you know, the sweepstakes mm -hmm. of some great, you know, two million, now it's up to two billion two, dollars. Right. That, all your friends from your past right. life come and they talk to you and they ask you for a little loan and mm -hmm. then the loan gets bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and it, it becomes more of a, a, a bother than a real gift. And then the money's gone. And then it's gone, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's my, my favorite part of the book was I think the competition itself. Okay. And, and you liked... When the, he discovered it was the Stradivarius. A when Stradivarius. When he took it to the appraiser. Yes. And so we had fun copying some of the food from mm -hmm. the book, a uh, little uh, blueberry pie here, and the, now finally he's got his Cobb salad. You know, he threw the other one in the trash because he was so upset with the policeman for, for uh, pulling him over right. and telling him, you know, there's something wrong with you. And, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna add some little drizzlings. Part of this, you can add any kind of dressing you want. 
on your salad. I kind of like a Greek style. I like um, <clears throat> oil, vinegar, and a little lemon juice. And you could, but you can do, it calls for ranch, and I'm not exactly a ranch aficionada. I do like it, but I don't care for it very often. So you can put anything you want on like this. So tell us about what you did to arrive at these gems. So the book starts with bacon and eggs. And so I'm a frittata fan. I usually use up at the end of the week what I have. And so today I took my eggs, I made them a frittata. So I pre-cook for my week, so I have breakfast. And then my new recipe I've been working on is French roasted tomatoes. So olive oil, tomatoes, uh, mushrooms, and balsamic vinegar. And I roast them till they're, till they're soft. My chef, Chef Cummings, you are really moving on here. I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed having you again. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, and we thank you for joining us. And remember, good food, good friends, good books make for, oh gosh, a magnificent, a wonderful, an amazing life, right? Yes, and thank you for ha having me back. Michiana legend, Gail oh. Martin, I'm thrilled. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.